Good morning and welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at market site, we have Sylvia Jablonski. She's the Managing Director with the Institutional ETF Group over at Direxion. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Thanks for having now, me, Now, investors are driven by three goals and there are some ETFs out there that can help advisors achieve those goals. Let's talk about those three goals and some of the products that they can use. Sure, so I, I think the, the three main goals or purposes for investors are either investors that are geared towards tactical trading, so they're looking for short-term opportunistic ideas and trades to generate alpha. Then you have the more medium-term macro thematic guys and then also the longer-term strategic model asset allocators. So in the first bucket, you know, and these are sort of clients that have been typically direction clients, you know, they look for high beta, three beta bull and bear products. You know, they might, for example, be bullish on biotech earnings or bearish on tech earnings. And they may, might use a levered ETF to express a short term view on that pending report for a day or two. Now, the thematic clients are looking for things like making picks on one sector over another. So they might look to relative weight ETFs. They might look to do something like get an exposure to emerging over developed because they think that emerging markets will perform well. And instead of just buying an emerging market ETF, they would like to also perform on the idea that emerging outbeats developed. So they might do a 150-50 structure where they get exposure to emerging markets plus a short extension on emerging versus developed. Um, and those, you know, those themes play out cyclicals over defensives, value over growth, large cap over small cap. So there's a lot of, you know, options for investors in that bucket. And those are ty the types of products that they might look to employ. Um, and then for the long term buy and hold clients, they might look for something like, you know, enhanced exposure to an index. So a lightly levered ETF, for example, like a 1.35 beta S&P 500 fund that just adds a little bit of juice, you know, so for thematic you're expressing the view that markets are cyclical and there are deviations between sector, style, box, size. And for long-term buy and hold, it's the idea that you have your model and over time markets perform, you have this set allocation and you would just like to sweeten, sweeten your secret sauce with a little bit of leverage. So those are the ideas there. We've, we have um, been covering this a lot lately, uh, model ETFs, a lot of them focusing mm -hmm. on relative strength, um, momentum, and I think in addition to helping advisors and investors work through earnings and work through the cyclicality of global markets, from an operational perspective, you don't have to add additional capital, no margin accounts. It, it functions the same as any equity account. Would. Yeah, and that's an awesome point because you're democratizing the investment tools. So it, it used to be, you know, before we got on air today, we were talking about the hedge funds and how hedge funds have access to all of these different types of, you know, products and, and options and futures and things like that. You know, the average retail investor and, and, and RIA and long-term only asset manager are long only constrained. They don't have stock loan accounts. They might not be comfortable or don't trade options. So, you know, products like these, like relative weight products or products with some inherent leverage, allow them to do what the hedge funds have been able to do for years in a cost-efficient, transparent ETF wrapper, so. Do you think that we'll continue to see growth in these types of products going forward? I do, I do, because I think that, you know, the things that the market was missing there's so many ETFs out there right we have all sorts of passive index benchmarking products it's sort of like how do you pick the best one probably at this point it might be the cheapest S&P 500 product that wins um, but when you look to do something else and especially when markets become more volatile and like you know less upward trending as they have been for the last decade advisors need something else and like relative wages wasn't out there before you know leverage light leverage wasn't out there before inverse products have been out there but there hasn't been a need for them so i think that advisors will start to employ these things in their asset management strategies all right sylvie thank you so much for thank joining you. us as always and thank you for joining me i'm jill malandrino global markets reporter at nasdaq